Good morning. Welcome to the Monday morning prayer time and devotional here at Faith Presbyterian Church. Well, if you have your Bibles, go to the book of James. Uh, we are walking through um, the book of James, and uh, the book of James is a is a wonderful, uh, wonderful letter written by the half brother of Jesus, um, and it's 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 a wonderful letter. In fact, many Christians uh, find it to be their favorite book of the Bible um, because it is incredibly practical. Um, Here's James, the half brother of Jesus, one of the one of the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. Um, I mean, he he was sort of uh, one of the founders of the church, if you if you could put it that way, in Jerusalem. He was on the he was on the ground floor of when the church was founded at, on the day of Pentecost. And here's James being uh, James is just is just giving some wonderful practical advice about how to live out uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ in all of life. And if you notice, the, the book of James opens up with James jumping right into things. I mean, most of the, most New Testament letters begin with this long, um, flowery, deep theological truth, uh, sort of like First Peter on Sunday mornings, or uh, another one that comes to mind is, is uh, the book of Ephesians. Um, but here James just kind of uh, skips all that big theology and jumps right into the issue he wants to get at, which I believe is the main theme of the book of James, which is which is suffering um, through many trials. Um, and now, I would argue that James presupposes big, thick, gospel-centered, robust theology. I, I think he, he's presupposing that. Um, and, and what he's doing he, is he's saying, look, you guys, you guys know the gospel. You guys know uh, what it means to live for Jesus. And now let me show you how to do it. And, and, and uh, the first thing I want to kind of reveal to you is that, look, Suffering is an, is a natural part of life. Suffering is the the DNA of the Christian life. You're going to experience persecution. You're going to experience suffering um, because you are living counter culturally to this world. You are you are living as a kingdom of the citizen of God and not as a citizen of this earth. Um, and so naturally, there's going to be uh, persecution. Naturally, there's going to be suffering. Naturally, like First Peter puts it, you're going to feel like an like an elect exile. Um, dispersed among the nations. And uh, so James is writing to his, to his readers and he's saying, look, this is how you deal with it. This is how you deal with trials. This is how you deal with suffering. Don't be surprised when they come upon you because, again, it is a natural thing for the Christian to experience trials and persecution and suffering in this life. And so how do we deal with it? Well, that's what James is going to deal with in our text this morning. So we're going to look at James chapter 1, verses 2 to 8. Uh, ever so briefly this morning. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to James chapter 1, and let's look at verses 2 to 8. James write, writes, he says, Count it all joy, my brothers, or brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without, a, without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And so James says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Of various kinds. I mean, he's talking about like, and, and the word trial and the phrase various kinds is is so intentionally ambiguous. <laughs> um, he doesn't talk about, uh, you know, trials as in the context of, of when you um, are sharing the gospel with someone. He's not talking about trials of, of when you get that cancer diagnosis and, and you don't know if you've had, if you have two days, two months or two years to live. Um, he's including all of those things, everything from from a direct persecution because of your faith and to all the way to just health issues, you know? Um, and he says all of that should be counted as joy when you experience uh, those things because God is teaching you something. Remember uh, the other day when we, when we started the book of James, I said the number one question the Christian should ask is not why is this happening to me? The, the number one question a Christian should ask is what is God teaching me? Now, I'm not saying it's inappropriate to ask why this is happening to me. I mean, read the book of Psalms. Read the book of Psalms. Um, over and over again, the, the authors of the Psalms are crying out to God, asking why. Why is this happening to me? Why have you left me, O oh God? Why have you abandoned me? You know, um, Because as Christians, we are 
given the uh, the ability. We're, we're, God paves the way. He opens a way for us to cry out to him and ask these questions of him. Um, as long as we are uh, directing our faith and our suffering toward him, he allows us to ask those hard questions. But just know the number one question he's going to answer when you ask the, uh, the question of why, he's going to be answering the question of what. This is what I am teaching you throughout all of this. In fact, James points that out in verse 5. Look what he says. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Now, why does he ask that right on the tail end of saying, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds? Because the number one thing that you need in the midst of trial is godly wisdom. And godly wisdom leads you to ask that question, what is God teaching me? What is God teaching me throughout all of this? Because, you know, trials and con trials and confusion walk hand in hand. Suffering and confusion walks hand in hand. I can't tell you how many pastor friends I've talked to who, who either they have, uh, uh, they, they've gotten a really bad health diagnosis or things are just not going well in their life and they're experiencing deep depression and anxiety and and, and, and I'll hear things from them, and, and, and I myself have, have felt this way at times throughout my ministry. Um, I'll hear things from them like, you know, um, I can't see the light of day. I don't even know which way is up anymore. Confusion. Utter confusion. Because chaos and trial and suffering will cause you to feel directionless. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll cause you to feel like you don't know which way is right, which way is left, which way is up, and which way is down. So that's why James says, if any of you lacks wisdom, if any of you feel like you've lost your way in the midst of trials and tribulation, then ask God. Go to God and ask for wisdom. Why? Well, why, do, why do we need to go to God and ask for wisdom? Because <clears throat> you need godly wisdom in the midst of trials. You can't use worldly wisdom. You can't use uh, your own wisdom because you're, you can't trust that. You have to have godly wisdom. You have to have a truth from God in order to uh, find your direction in the midst of chaos and tribulation. And, and, and look how James describes um, what happens if you go to God seeking godly wisdom. He says, um, God will give generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. He gives generously. He gives generously. Now, how does this wisdom come to us? Well, it doesn't come, you know, dropped on golden bowls or golden plates from heaven. <laughs> you know, um, there's not an audible voice, really. You, you know, God's not going to shout it down to you in an audible voice, the wisdom that you need. We have the wisdom uh, of God in our hands. This is my, this is my Bible. <laughs> this is the wisdom that God has given us right here in our hands. That's why the Psalms exist. Oh my goodness, the Psalms are there for us to to go to and and to to read and to hear um, how God's people have suffered over time and how God's people have cried out to God in the midst of suffering and tribulation how how God's people has, have have experienced the grace and forgiveness of God what it looks like for for a Christian to lament it's found on the Psalms I mean stand up and read them and stamp around the, the living room if you need to and cry out to God and plead with Him and and, and call to him. And what that does is that 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 uh, that lamenting causes you to enter into a in a, um, a communicative relationship with God. And you feel close to God when you when you begin to speak to him. I, I have so many people, uh, you know, say to me, I don't know how to pray. And I always say, do you know how to talk? You know how to talk, don't you? You know, you don't need to you don't need to use Latin to talk to God. You don't need to use all the these or the vows. You know, a lot of people think that you need to use King James Version only language, and absolutely not. God gave you the gift of speech, not so much to communicate with your fellow mankind, but God gave you the gift of speech so that you can communicate with God. So you can talk to Him, speak to Him, cry out to Him. In fact, oftentimes there's not even words that we can find. We can't even properly articulate the deep-seated suffering that we're feeling in our own hearts and minds. And even then we're told that in, in the scriptures that, that the Holy Spirit himself knows what we want to say. And even when we have the inability to say it, the Holy Spirit knows how to say it. And he goes to God and intercedes for us. So all we have to do is seek him, seek the wisdom that, that we need right here in the scriptures to know how to talk to him. And God gives generously. In fact, look how thick 
This Bible is. That's generous giving. That's a lot of talking from God, right? That's a lot of word from the Lord. I mean, it's, that's thick stuff. <laughs> so God has given us the wisdom, his wisdom, generously. But look at verse 6. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from God. He's a double-minded man and stable in all his ways. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, Jason, I doubt sometimes. I struggle in my faith sometimes. But that's not the doubting I think that James is referring to here. What kind of doubting is James referring to? Well, the doubting that James is referring to is the, is, is the person he describes in verse 8. He is a double-minded man. The doubting that James is referring to is not someone who's struggling with their faith, not someone who has the object of their faith as Jesus Christ. And 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 uh, they're like the man in the book of Mark, I believe now, help my unbelief. I mean, that's every Christian. Every Christian struggles in their in their faith and, and, and in doubting. But here James is referring to a double-minded man, someone who who says, Okay, I'm gonna use God when I need to use God. And I'm going to use other means when I need to use those other means. Someone who, who's believing both the world and God. That person is like a double-minded man. That person is not going to go to the scriptures. That person is looking for a quick fix. That person is looking for, um, for, for, for magic snake oil. That person is going to Joel Olstein, you know what I mean, for, for a good, uh, for good encouraging, encouraging word. Um, instead of going to the scriptures, instead of going to the wisdom of God with their doubt. A double-minded man is, is believing both the world and seeking to believe God at the same time, serving the world and serving God at the same time. And so when suffering hits, this person will grab whatever um, inspirational material they can grab. It could be God, it could be something else, but to make them feel better. And, and James says that God will, God will not give that person wisdom generously because the person is not seeking it only from God. See, we can go to God with our doubts, go to God with our struggles, but are we going to God alone? We're not going to other gods. And that, and, and God will give generously in the midst of our doubts, in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our suffering. And what is God going to do? He's going to point us to Jesus every single time. Because Jesus is the example of how to endure, how to have faith, how to walk in faithfulness with the Lord in the midst of suffering. In fact, he was on the cross. He was dying on the cross. And as he was breathing his last breath, he was still crying out to his father. This is what James is, is, is encouraging, encouraging us to do. To count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. And as you meet trials of various kinds, seek the wisdom of the Lord. Go to God with your doubts, for he will give you wisdom generously from his word and take you to Jesus, who will, who will, who will help you experience all kinds of various trials with joy. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the book of James. Thank you for teaching us and instructing us on how to experience trial and tribulation for your glory and for our joy. God, I pray that you help these people. These people are watching this video, walking through James. God, I pray that you help them. Um, I pray that you help them endure the trials they are going to going through right now. And I pray that you help them seek you and seek you and the wisdom that you offer in your word. And we know that you will give it to them generously. Father, may you do all things for your glory. All things ask your name. Amen. Well, I hope everything is going well for you. Uh, uh, make sure you email me, text me, or call me if you need anything. Um, uh, pray for me. I am uh, going through uh, kind of a, you know, I'm trying to get over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Really taking it to my Packers yesterday. That was a hard game to watch. Um, but anyway, I hope you're doing well. And uh, give me a call if you need anything. God bless.